Welcome back y'all to Whiplash TV. Today I'm going to tackle a project on this 2005 GMC Duramax. It's a LLY and I've gotten a code on this truck so we're going to look into the code, look into the fix of it, and jump right into it. First things first, please if you would hit that thumbs up and hit the like on this video and then also consider subscribing and ringing the notifications bell so that way you'll get notified every time I post a new video. All right, let's jump right into it. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna hook up our code reader. We're gonna take our code reader. We're gonna hook it up into the OBD2 port, which is right here on this truck. We're gonna hook it up and we're gonna check our code. So the code that I got was the P0046 code, which is for the Turbo Boost Control Solenoid Circuit Range Performance. Now I got that code a couple of times. I generally, when I get a code for the first time, I will take a screenshot of it and keep it just for my history of what codes have ever popped up on one of my vehicles. And then from there, if the code comes back a second time, I will take action. I will take action on the first time if I can tell that there's a legit problem with the vehicle. The most common causes of the P0046 code is a failing boost pressure or turbocharger position sensor, a failed boost control solenoid or VGT actuator, your variable veins, or a faulty turbo or supercharger, or wiring issues, lastly, a damaged PCM. I felt very confident that I did not have a damaged PCM. I checked over my wires. Obviously, a faulty turbo or a supercharger is very expensive and not something that you want to just jump right into. And I did change the vein position sensor just because it was also the cheapest sensor. And when I pulled that one out, it also had a bunch of black gummy junk on the end of it. And I cleaned it up, but I decided to go ahead and replace it because it was cheap and it was easy just to see if that was an issue first. But that didn't fix it and the problem kept coming back so I decided to pay attention to the boost control solenoid. So now that we've checked our code, let's go into the hood and take a look. Your solenoid is right here. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna disconnect the negative battery cables off of our batteries. We'll disconnect that we're going to remove this air intake tube that way we can have easier access to it then we're going to disconnect the electrical on it So now that the air intake tube is off, you can see our solenoid that we're changing right here a lot better and work around it better. We have the electrical connection right there that we're gonna take off next. This electrical connection is just simply a wire that's going to pop up and then that will release it to gently pull out. Then the next thing to do is that there's a 5 16 12 point bolt up underneath there. Okay, this oil line makes it kind of tough to see, but it can be removed off the top of the turbo to move it out the way if you need to. But the 5 16 12 point bolt that we're gonna remove is right down there and it holds on this metal bracket that is around the solenoid. So you want to be really careful 
because that bolt's down there and you don't want to drop it into that cavity down there. So I suggest stuffing like a rag down underneath it so that if you do drop that bolt, that you're going to catch it. Then once you get it out, we're going to take this bracket off and this solenoid will come straight out and then it's going to kind of tip towards this way towards the front of the turbo and it's going to come right out of that hole that's sitting in in the turbo. So now I've got my rag up underneath there. I have my 5 16 12 point socket. Some people have to use like a swivel to get on it. But I'm able to get on mine just with a straight extension. I find it easiest to grab it with a finger around the back side of the oil line right here. And then with my thumb, and now that it's loose, I can pull it right on out. The bracket will be loose now. You can pull it down off your solenoid and down and out the way. And then now, we're going to work our solenoid out. There it is. You are going to get a little bit of oil out when your solenoid comes out but you can bring it out just like that. So that's another good reason for having that rag down there beneath it. After your solenoid comes out, then your bracket will come out. Now we'll go compare this to our brand new one and go take a look. All right, so we have our current boost control solenoid out of the truck. The first time that I pulled this out of the truck, before now, which was maybe a hundred miles ago, the end of this solenoid is actually like a plunger. So if you push it, it goes in and out just like that. You have five O-rings here as well on your solenoid and it's controlled by motor oil. So this is going to have a big effect on making boost and making boost early and it not taking a long time to get into boost so the first time i pulled this out it had a bunch of black junk and goo on this plunger at the end and right now it's actually cycling a lot smoother than it was but i'm still getting a code for it the code stayed off for a while but then it did end up coming back some people have good luck with laying these soak in like motor oil overnight and then cleaning up the end of the plunger and getting all the gunk off of it. I took some WD-40 and just kind of cleaned it up. As you can see, it's, it's pretty clean. It's still got just a little bit over here, but for the most part, it's just kind of stained. It's pretty clean still. But even if the junk on the plunger and freeing it up and working it to where it will move more easily doesn't fix it. You know, that doesn't mean that the electronics in it are good or working all the time. So when it says the range performance is not right, you know, your electronics can be part of it or could just be dirty and nasty from being in there over time. So feel free when you get this code to pull this out and do a little cleanup on it. Don't use any harsh cleaners that are gonna mess with your O-rings and make your rubber O-rings hard or brittle and clean up all the junk and goop on it. And like I said, you can, you can work that plunger in and out and try to clean it up, reinstall it to the truck, give it some time, see if you get another code. So now that I have cleaned this one and the code has still come back. I'm going to install a brand new one. I got this one off of carparts.com. 
As you can see, it looks just like the one that we removed out of the truck, but of course it has fresh O-rings on it. Also, I've noticed that the plunger is sticking out just a little bit more on the new one than it is on the old one. If we put them together, there's just a little bit of a gap to where the old one does not bottom out on the new one. I don't know if you can quite see that in the video. Also, when I cycle this new one, it's a lot harder to push on as well than the old one. The old one, the plunger is a lot softer and easier to go in. So I noticed that as a difference between the two. So since the code did not go away with this one and the truck can take a little bit of time to get into some boost during just normal driving, we're gonna see how it reacts with this brand new one here. I'll leave a link down in the description below. There is also some that you can get off of Amazon. They had mixed reviews on the ones on Amazon. So I spent just a little bit more money. I think this one was about $72. The Dorman one is around $160, I believe. And you can pay even up into the 200s for these solenoids. I did find them as cheap as about $44 on Amazon, but I decided to go ahead, spend a little bit more money and try to get one that had better reviews and that hopefully was going to work. So the new one comes with a new 5 16 bolt that'll get installed. And then also it comes with this new metal housing. These solenoids were used in lots of gm duramaxes they were used in the lly lbz and also the lmm from what i've seen also it was used on the garrett turbos on some power stroke diesels as well so it's a common part and this problem is common that once they get some age for them to go out so I've let it soak overnight in this oil. I wouldn't say it has to be overnight. In fact, you can probably take it out the package and just put some oil on it and go ahead and install it. Make sure there's oil on your O-rings. So now we're gonna take the new solenoid over to the truck, install it into the turbo. Remember to put your bracket back in there in this position before you slide this in because remember we could not get the bracket out until the solenoid came out so bracket first then solenoid then slide this up on it and then install your bolt So now everything's back together. Our new solenoid's installed. The rag has been grabbed from underneath the turbo. Don't forget that. The batteries have been reconnected. So now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the key forward on the truck and leave it in that on run position just for a little bit. 
I like to do that whenever I put in a new sensor. That can help out with the computer just realizing where the new sensor is at in position. And then we're going to go ahead and fire it up and crank it. So now I've let the truck just kind of sit for about five minutes or so and giving it a little bit of gas, just kind of like that, nice and easy. So whenever you change out a sensor on something like something controlling turbo vanes or even like a mass airflow sensor or things that cause a lot of variables, it's always good to give it some time to idle, to relearn in, and then when you drive it, just drive it, you know, nice and easy at first and start out like that. So we're gonna go on the drive and see how this does. This truck does have one of those uh, Bully Dog Outlooks. So we've got our boost reading right here. We can watch our boost PSI and see what it does on our drive. going in the boost a little bit easier. Alright, we're going to get up to some highway speeds now. As you can see by our test drive, the truck is now fixed. There's no check engine light. The truck is running good, running strong. So like I said, just give your vehicle some time, you know, let it learn the new solenoid on its own. Let it have some idle time. Let it have some normal driving time before you decide you're just gonna go wide open throttle and just really get into it. I hope this video helps you all with your P0046 code. Again, please hit that like button and also consider subscribing. I hope this video was a help to you. I'll catch you all in the next video.